We watched, for the very first time, AEW Rampage. The set looks exactly like Dynamite. It's not like I want a giant fist sticking out of the screen or anything like that, but... Uh, bro, something. don't denigrate the fist, because you're going to make people mad at you. Hits a kill switch onto the chair, throws the chair out of the ring, makes the cover, ref counts three, the place goes crazy. This was so unbelievably good. The fans absolutely loved it. They went crazy for it. They saw a title change in the opening match of the very first Rampage. If you're watching on a home, at home, it just tells you this is a, a can't-miss show. And the whole time he's talking, in the background, doing nothing but being himself, is Orange Cassidy. <laughs> just observing, taking it all in. The stipulation was, if he wins the TNT Championship, he's going to get a contract. Yes. That doesn't mean if you don't win, yes. you will never get a contract. They didn't break a step. No. They never said he must win to get a contract. As soon as they told him to stay in the ring through the commercial, I'm sure he probably got a clue. Uh, but uh, this was a this was a shoot uh, contract offer. Notice he didn't sign. Smart guy. Got to read that thing. Rebel took the crutch and put it across her throat as she was sitting in the corner, and Britt was kicking the crutch into her throat. You can't do that. No, that's illegal. It's Bret Hart in Canada. He's still a dick to the baby faces, but it's in Canada. And so when she attacks Velvet after the match. Everyone cheers. When Chris Stanlander, Setlander <laughs> runs so out to bizarre. even the odds, everyone boos. It, it was Bizarro World, yes. And then Jamie Hayter, whose last name is Hater, mm -hmm. she comes out, everyone cheers. She looked absolutely completely different. Yes. She's had a, a complete and total makeover. Unless she was wearing a shirt that said, I am Jamie Hater, <laughs> I have no clue I'm a hater. Woman. If money were no option, I'd be doing the exact same thing I'm doing right now. Hanging out at the beach. Did chastising that. the YouTube viewers who are listening live. You know, nothing would change. Who could ask for more? I am so sick of this phone autocorrecting the word fucking to ducking. It does it every single time. And I, I, I delete it and I try again. I delete it and I try again. Who do you go to bingo with? Who do you fire from the empire forever? And who is president of the United States of America? Filthy to all of them. Well, there you go. <laughs> what? Wait. Well, I guess you'd have to fire him if he's going to be the president. <laughs> you'd have to fire him from his podcast if he's going to he'll be busy. Friday Night Smackdown. I slept through the first uh, hour. Great review. Warrior versus Hogan, and everybody's going to say, she already did that. Well, you did. Huh? So, uh, what's his name on it? <laughs> <laughs> he sure did. Kicks on head, face kicks, head first on turnbuckle. Ant on me. For Sonic who. Should I call 911? See if she can figure out this red five. Because she's going to have to. Otherwise, we can't get Craig on. Oh, shit. Oh, no. did you hear that, Vinny? No. Granny, we heard that. Shit. Shit. I cannot well, believe we got, that. Well, we got number one for best of the year right there. Wow. Did you hear that, Vinny? No. Steph here actually donated nine dollars and ninety-nine cents as a thank you to Granny for swearing. <laughs> really? What do I get for saying shit? Nothing. What? Jack shit is what you get. No. Oh. Granny's very upset. I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not. Oh no. Uh, she feels that she is falsely accused of saying a swear word. She says that she said, shoot. Shit. Shit. You could say that if you wanted to. That perhaps would not be uh, fair. Just, are you having a You can see that my uh, dryer is on underneath me. The match itself is just beautiful. It's just a beautiful, beautiful wrestling match. But I didn't enjoy watching it because it's NXT. Like, the brand is now tainted. I was able to enjoy the match because I just like watching Ilya Dragunov and Roderick Strong be awesome. But yes, I, the booking of this show is just, uh, I mean this with all due respect, it's an atrocity. Hit Row wins the brawl, they leave everyone laying, Swerve takes his grill back, and they walk away. Is it's this like, feud over now? How could I possibly care about the next match they have because the whole thing was built around the guy's grill being stolen, and now he got his grill back. There's one thing that this should be building towards, whether or not Dexter Loomis can say, I do, because he's never spoken. Was it just me, or was this absolute horseshit? You might be one of the best competitors in the world, 
But you don't have a real bone in your body, do you? I think they both have real bones in their body. Write whatever narrative you want. <laughs> Villain, hero, whatever you wish. Jumps to his feet and screams, we're going to the moon! He's shaking his head back and forth, he's pumping both fists. He starts walking back and forth, pacing, I'm back, baby! Woo! He's hollering. Grimes was so awesome here. DiBiase's trying to keep a straight face, but he's just cracking because Cameron Grimes is so incredible. And the good thing is, his gimmick is that he laughs. He cracks, and then at the end, he bursts into laughter, and the segment ends. I thought this was fantastic. He chopped the soul out of this crowd. And as soon as Valter just hit that one giant chop, it's like they all gasped. <gasps> Takeover's going to be a great show. But, I mean, you wouldn't know that from watching this show in terms of the way that they did all of the go-home angles. Stacks them up like cordwood, slaps them in a double scorpion deathlock, and 2.0 taps out. A very, very, very fun opener. And then Sting goes out and has a big hug for the boss, and Jim Ross knows they've made movies together. And just, just fun, fun, fun all around. Every AEW show, there is a match that just feels like a fucking party. And the fans are going crazy, and they're doing all sorts of nutty shit, and the baby faces get a big victory, and everybody goes nuts. Congratulations on getting engaged. I guess it's slim pickings in Houston. And he says to Pam, he's happy for her. He's so happy he's going to make her an honorary member of Pinnacle so that for one night in her life, she can be on top. <laughs> yes, you're such an awesome dick. That's so perfect. Dan Lambert needs to manage Minoru Suzuki. Oh, my God. <laughs> I thought, holy fucking shit, what an idea. Can you imagine Dan Lambert managing Minoru Suzuki against John Moxley? The shit that those three could do together? Holy smokes. That was a lot going on. Now, when it was done, in a good way, I was exhausted. But I very much needed a break. I just watched the Young Bucks, and I thought, they're the best tag team I ever saw. Yeah. Like, it's not even close. They are such a great tag team. Kenny Omega, we did not mention his utterly awesome bedazzled cookie monster shirt this last week. This week he's wearing a chick magnet shirt. All these shirts are subtle clues. And at the same time as his beatdown is going on, Don Callis is cheering on his men going, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> because AEW drops hints. And they're awesome at it. There was a brief moment where everybody was like, ah, where do we start? And then once they found out where to start, it was like one of the most amazing entrances you've ever seen. Yes. They sang their hearts out for this guy on his way to the ring. Jericho rears back and he punches the camera, which goes flying back into MJF's eyeball. There were four violent labors, including Nick Gage. Jericho was selling each week like he was getting more and more tired and worn out. It all started with him destroying his elbow, legit, and then working with a destroyed elbow, legit. I mean, MJF hadn't wrestled in forever. He was fresh. Like, in storyline, it made sense that Jericho would not be able to overcome MJF in the end. Now, with that said... I was 100% expecting Chris Jericho to win. There's a good chance that MJF will be the first real program for CM Punk when he comes in. I think the but first program is going to be Darby. But I guess that could be a singles match, and then the I, program I, would be MJF. CM Punk's tagline, of course, was straight edge means better than you, which, of course, is also MJF's tagline. So that just leads in, and I think their promos back and forth would be awesome. I'd be fine with CM Punk and Jericho, or somebody where it doesn't feel like the 43-year-old guy that just came out of retirement is coming in and beating all your 20-year-olds. I don't like that.